الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبا القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء أما بعد respected scholars, elders, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Inshallah as a continuation from the topic of the previous nights of Salat of the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib, we want to look into the perspective of repentance, the perspective of changing ourselves. As Eid becomes closer and closer, we want to realize why is it that we do celebrate Eid? Why is it that at the end of the month of mercy, the month of fasting, the month of in which we gain closeness to Allah through our worship, through our salat, through our siyam, through our zakat, through our long nights, of worship, why is it that at the end of this month we celebrate? Why is there Eid? Inshallah, once we realize why Eid takes place, we want to remember and how is it that we can look into this particular month and carry it on, carry on our worship, carry on our stance, the character that we have developed during this month all the way until the next month or the next holy month of Ramadan, insha'Allah. By looking at first and foremost, the concept which we, we touched on yesterday, which was tawakkul versus tawakkul. Then looking at how is it we can prepare ourselves? How is it we can manage ourselves? How is it, or what small things can we look at or apply to ourselves in which it will help our worship, help us in developing our character, help us in being a better Muslim? And then we would like to look at the deeds, our good deeds versus Allah's mercy. Because someone may come forth and say that in the day of judgment, it may come down to my a'mal. I have worshipped this much, I have done this much salah, this much zakat, this much siyam, and Allah will surely grant me paradise. However, there's the other point of view in saying that it's not just your a'mal. It might not be any of your a'mal that are accepted. However, it may be the mercy of Allah that allows you to go into heaven. So that's the main aspect I want everyone to ponder over tonight. To think about. And then we'll manage to look at it at the end of the lecture for tonight. Is it because of our good deeds that we enter paradise or because of Allah's mercy? Now ponder over it and we'll analyze it at the end of the lecture for tonight. So please help me in starting tonight's lecture by reciting aloud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Tawakkul versus tawakkul. As I was asked to repeat the analogy from yesterday to gain a more in-depth perspective on it, a more in-depth idea and concept of the idea of tawakkul versus tawakkul because some people might not have heard it because of the, the downpour of rain and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yesterday night. Now tawakkul versus tawakkul is very easy, but it happens on a daily perspective and we're not able to actually realize it's happening to us. Now the idea is one aspect, someone may believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely. Someone might think of it as an arrogant level, someone may think of it as not in the perspective of intelligence. What's the example given? Tawakkul and tawakkul. Tawakkul is, the, we gave the example yesterday of someone owning a farm. In which he says, I want Allah and I let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cater for everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow my crops to grow, will allow everything to happen perfectly if I believe in him. If I believe in Allah, everything will happen. Now that's looked at as being tawakkul. Tawakkul is when you do everything in your power to ensure everything else is left to Allah. So if you own a farm, what did we say yesterday? If the person takes into account 
that they get the fertilizer ready, they plant the seeds, they water the garden, they ensure as a human they do everything necessary to allow the crops to grow, to allow this farm to produce the product that it has for its needs. He's done everything. Then he says, the blessing is from Allah. Then he says, whatever Allah pr provides, I am sufficed. That's tawakkul. When you do everything that you can, you can't say, and keep, we can keep saying to ourselves that, you know what? We're going to be better Muslims. Allah will provide that we become better Muslims. Tomorrow, inshallah, Allah will guide me. We've never do, but we don't do anything. We don't do, look into our mistakes. We don't look at our faults. We don't want to change ourselves. In the Quran, what does it say? Allah does not change a tribe or village or a qawm, except that they change what's in themselves. First and foremost, we have to change ourselves. You know the, the saying in which we have to change the environment and we have to change this society for our children? There's this perspective that says, you know what, we have to make sure that we build and we produce and we ensure that the society our children will live in will be very prosperous. And there's a reverse angle saying, you know what, why don't we bring up our children to create that society? Why don't we imply it in ourselves first and foremost before implying it on others? And that's the perspective I want to look at tonight. We can't just say to ourselves that inshallah Allah will do this. Inshallah will be guided. I hope inshallah tomorrow I'll pray on time. There's obviously stuff that we have to do to ensure that tomorrow does happen. Because how many times, and I talked about myself first and foremost, I say to myself, tomorrow I'll do such and such. But I never actually, for example, if I want to wake up on time, I say, inshallah, tomorrow Allah blesses me to wake up on time. I don't prepare an alarm clock. I don't even check what time salah is. I don't know, you know, if I will be prepared tomorrow, what I'll have to do after, before it, what time I'll wake up, make wudu. I don't know anything. But I say to myself that inshallah Allah will wake me up at that time. But I don't prepare. If you see on the flip side, if someone wants to, in essence, go towards Allah, wants in essence to something as small as pray on time, it's big in Allah's eyes. We might see it as something very small, inshallah Allah will guide us. It's massive in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Praying on time. And we said yesterday, Imam Mahdi, Ajal Allah ta'ala farajah al-Sharif. And the coincidence with that boy that till today he prays on time. To that perspective, if we want to make sure that we want to better ourselves, we have to prepare the preparation pr process. That's the example I want to give. If we want to go and pray, let's say, and because we've talked about prayer, that's why we're giving the example of prayer tonight. Yesterday we said if we want to pray on time, if we want to have the concentration in prayers, wa alaykum as -salam, if we want to have the concentration, let's make the environment in which we're praying Spiritual. Let's make people go as far as to make what? Make a dim corner in the house in which they light candles. They have a beautiful scent. They have atr on their sajjada, on their prayer mat. They have the tasbih. They have all the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, in and around them. They're in the environment. They're living what they want to achieve, but they prepare it. When you want to move into a house, you just move into a house? Or do you furnish it? Do you ensure that you're comfortable in there? you ensure that you are happy in there? If you want to, and this is just a worldly desire. Imagine the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want to ensure this, we have to pre-prepare for this particular incident. That's just praise. But it can be applied into any part of our life. Because if we want to go towards Allah, we want to make sure Imam... Our fourth Imam narrates to us is if you actually want to go towards Allah, you don't have to just make the niyyah. The niyyah is very important, but you have to act upon it. He says, if you want to make tawbah and go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to prepare yourself. How? He says, fast. He says, fast in the idea that you want to go towards Allah, that you want to repent to Allah. Have a shower. Cleanse yourself physically and mentally. Have a shower. Pray to rak'at. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, I want to gain nearness to you. I want to get closer to you. To prepare yourself. Imam saying, it's not just the idea. You have to act upon it. You have to act upon it. Otherwise, you won't see any results if you don't go towards Allah. And we have many examples in which people has the near.
but doesn't act upon it. How many times did we say to ourselves, we want to pray on time? How many times did we say to ourselves, we want to do this particular act of worship? We want to, how many times did we ask ourselves that, yes, we were going to fast every Monday and Thursday because it's mustahab? Many times we tell ourselves, and I say to myself, first and foremost, many times I say to myself, I'm going to fast Monday and Thursday. Monday comes, I say to myself, oh, I didn't wake up for suhoor, I'm kind of hungry, I didn't prepare myself. Other days, yes, you prepare yourself, you say, yes, I'm going to fast that day, because it's Musa, I'm going to fast it. When you prepare yourself, you're already in the mindset. And subhanAllah, you have the tawfiq, once you're in that mindset and you act upon it. Allah provides, Allah gives you the opportunity, He wakes you up in the middle of the night. To have the suhoor, to go towards Allah, to fast the next day. And this will be implied day in, day out, if you keep this particular process. If you initiate this process into your everyday life, we'll begin to choose that which is right from wrong. Because one day you think to yourselves that yes, I'm going to prepare for something that's good. But if you don't prepare and you never do that thing which is good that's in the bottom of your head, on the back of your mind, you will be tempted by shaitan. Because if you're not doing that which is good, that time you can spend towards to do that which is good, you're going to spend in other places. له لعب and maybe even sin والعياذ بالله because Ali ibn Abi Talib has a beautiful statement he says if a person wants to know what he is inside his inner self, his essence what his inner self leans towards he says look at what you do when no one is looking when no one's in the house when no one's watching he says Ali ibn Abi Talib says look at yourself what you do do you go towards Allah? Do you go towards sin? He says, make sure in those moments when you think that no one else is looking, if you have in the back of your mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Because you've prepared yourself mentally that you know Allah is always watching. Because you know what would Imam Mahdi do? If I'm in a situation, what would my Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman want me to do in a particular situation? Preparing, not just physically, mentally. Because if we always have Allah in the back of our minds, if we always have that the concept of death is in the back of our minds, do you think anyone would actually sin? Anyone would go towards that which is bad, knowing that we could die at any second? We won't even be tempted by shaitan. If we had Allah, if we were God-fearing. There was an analogy given, and it's, this story is actually attributed to many people in history, but the most famous is attributed to Einstein, in which he was in a classroom, and the teacher is teaching. And he says, it's a very interesting aspect, he says that God created good and he created evil. Now let's look at this analogy. God created good and he created evil. One of the students stood up, he says, this doesn't make sense to me. He says, why? He says, God can't have great, if God is all, you know, is all good, he's, he's, he's a pure, he's perfection, he can't create that which is good, that which is evil. He says, prove me wrong. The teacher is saying to the student, then he says, well, God created the sun, God created light. He says, yes. He says, can you say that God created darkness? He says, yes. He says, that's, you're wrong. He says, excuse me, I'm the teacher here. He says, how does your, how's your shadow, which is darkness, produced? It's a very interesting concept. He says, how is this shadow produced? Is it because of darkness or the lack of light? Because a shadow is everything that the light doesn't hit, isn't it? It doesn't allow the sun to go towards that place. That's why you have that shadow. He says, likewise, I believe that God didn't create evil. He created that which is light, which is good. People chose to take the wrong path. He has given you everything. What's a, what's a better example that we can give? Is the concept we have in the Shia school of thought. The concept, if you go to any particular scholar, in which he tells you, you ask any scholar, you tell them, is Allah going to take us towards heaven and hell based on our deeds or based on Allah's mercy? And unanimously they come forth and say, you could, be, you could do the best deeds. You could be the, the biggest prostrator, the best person. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't will you to go towards hell, or doesn't want you to go, to go towards heaven, you won't go. It's Allah's mercy. Why? Because you would not be able to perform any sort of worship without Allah's blessing. How? Let's say a particular act of worship. Let's say a sadaqah. First and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to give you 
the right mindset, a brain, a full functioning body, organs, in which you can work. Once you work, you produce money. Once you produce money, you know that it's right. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Then you know it's right to give charity. Therefore, you've used what Allah has given you to do that which is good, which is holy. On the flip side, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish you? Because He has given you all the abilities to do good, yet you choose to disobey Him. That's the, that's the beauty of this analogy. So it's because of Allah's mercy that you enter paradise. And not because of your good deeds. You can, you can a'mal and produce and produce and produce your mindset and how you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give towards you. When you worship Allah, He says, do this, you do it. If He says, don't do this, don't do it. Not because it will benefit Allah in any manner. Whatever we do, praying, fasting, won't benefit Allah. Who is it benefiting? It's benefiting ourselves. He says, this is halal, this is haram. It's because the halal will help you become prosperous, will build communities, will elevate your rank, will gain you closeness. When he says a particular thing is haram because it will have a negative effect, whether you see it or not, on your physical being, on your lineage, on the society around you. It has many negative aspects that we can look at. That's why it becomes haram. It's not because Allah will, will Billah, become affected in any manner. It's for our prosperity. Inshallah, in the, in the upcoming nights, we'll talk about what is Islam. Because we looked at it in a perspective of how to come towards Allah tonight. How to prepare ourselves for Eid. Because when we celebrate Eid, we're celebrating what? That we've gained a whole month of worship in every aspect, both our physical and mental needs. We've starved. We remembered the people that are less fortunate, that are the poor. We've remembered them. As well as purifying our bodies, we made sure that our tongue is held back, our eyesight, uh, our gazes are lowered, our akhlaq is elevated in this month and we're celebrating that we can achieve this. We are celebrating that we are capable to be this. Then why is it we can't continue it for the next year until the next month of Ramadan? That's the thing we have to ask ourselves tonight. And we have to prepare ourselves when this month finishes to keep it ongoing. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have his mercy. May show us mercy in the hereafter. We pray to Allah on that note, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, I give the opportunity to the Sheikh from now to give us some wise words on the pulpit. But we pray to Allah that we can prepare and have the tawfiq tonight to prepare ourselves for death, to prepare ourselves to be better Muslims, to be better in the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib, to be better and more knowledgeable and go towards that which pleases Allah and stay away from that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Ahl al-Bayt so that Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman can barely look at us and say, to, and say to himself, maybe he can be part of my army, insha'Allah. And we pray with the Surah Al-Mubarakat Al-Fatiha but before three of your loudest salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.